The Smashing Pumpkins from Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. And if you're looking for a comprehensive collection of double albums for your alt-rock library, you got to have that one. Let me give you a few more possibilities. There's Zen Arcade from 1984 by the Minneapolis hardcore punk band Husker Du. That was a hugely important record when it came to the American hardcore scene. Husker Du showed that it was possible to mate loud guitars with pop melodies, and it's a concept album, too. I really like Lift Your Skinny Fists Like Antennas to Heaven by Montreal's Godspeed, You Black Emperor. Just four tracks here, which work like symphonic movements. It's very cool. There's the Minutemen's Double Nickels on the Dime with its 45 songs. And in many ways, it was to American punk what London Calling was to British punk. Let's see, what else have we got? Well, there's uh, Public Image Limited's Metal Box from 1979. 69 Love Songs from the Magnetic Fields. That came out in 1999. XTC's English Settlement from 1982. Oh, can't forget the Fragile from Nine Inch Nails. Not Trent's best work, but essential if you're a fan of his stuff. Wilco's Being There from 1996. The Cure's Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me. That came out in 1987. And one more, Daydream Nation from Sonic Youth in 1988. That's an even 10 double albums that I think that every alt-rock fan should own. If you want that list again, email me through thesecrethistoryofrock.com and I'll get the whole thing to you. Coming up, weird stories from the road. More of The Secret History Rock coming up. Back to The Secret History Rock with Alan Cross. I have only done the tour bus thing once, and even then it was just for about a week. But it didn't take me long to understand how weird an existence that is. You're in this bubble that's always moving. You quickly become confused as to when to eat, when to sleep, where you are, what day it is. And my trip was on a nice bus. Apparently, the last clients to use it before our group was um, Michael Bolton's road crew. Anyway, there were flat screen TVs with satellite, mini DVD players in the bunks. I can't imagine what it must be like to tour in a van. So uh, my sympathies to everyone who has to make a living this way. No wonder things can get so weird on the road. Take the case of garbage. They're on tour in Eastern Europe and they had an encounter with a Russian border agent. The date was February 4th, 1999. They had just finished a gig in St. Petersburg, and they were driving to play the next show in Tallinn, Estonia. But when they tried to leave Russia, they were stopped. Why? Because of the way their road cases were labeled. And you know the cases I'm talking about, those giant black things used to carry all the gear and instruments and lighting and sound equipment. And usually everything is stenciled with the name of the band in big white letters on, on these cases. So what was the problem with the Russians? All the road cases were clearly labeled garbage. And the border guards were not going to deal with the exportation of trash. And no matter how hard the band and their crew tried to explain to the border guards that the name of the band was garbage and they weren't hauling actual garbage, the guards wouldn't budge. They didn't want to get into trouble for exportation of trash. And the band did not make that show in Estonia the next night. <laughs> 